so welcome back to Ask Allison. Today I have the following question. How do I define my unique brand so that it attracts the right clientele while also providing a service to a broader audience? So first I wanna thank Therapy Notes for sponsoring us. So I want the person to listen to the way this question was asked. I'm gonna read it again. How do I define my unique brand so that it attracts the right clientele while also providing a service to a broader audience? I'm guessing that this is somebody who has been diving really deeply into business education. And it's kind of like we were swimming in grad school jargon back when we were in grad school. This person has been sucked into the whirlpool of business in a way that can make it harder for people to relate um, to them and thus harder for them to come and find you. So I want us all to practice writing in a way that's really accessible to other people. Um, and I don't mean to call this person out. I don't mean this to be a call out and I am going to answer their question. Um, but I know that I've been in this space and other people have too. And when it comes down to like writing the copy we need to write, um, whether that's a networking reach out, whether that's a um, website copy, I want us to, to bring it down to like more relatable verbiage. Okay, let's answer the question now. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what this question means. I think it means one of two things. I think it's either how can my messaging call in my niche and those outside my niche, or it is how can my messaging call in my ideal client when I have another business or service that serves different people. Um, so I'm going to answer both just in case. The way that your marketing can niche to your ideal clients and folks who are not ideal clients is by speaking about the specific day-to-day -day experience of your ideal clients. Um, there are people who have similar experiences day-to-day -day that have different presenting concerns. So for instance, my niche very broadly is working with people with eating disorders. I get a lot of perfectionistic people with high functioning anxiety in my practice who do not have eating disorders. And that's because, um, my copy speaks to that part of them because they share that in common. There's a Venn diagram. They're both right there in the middle. And also when I'm feeling maxed out on clients with eating disorders, I turn to my referral sources that I know well and say, I'm feeling a little maxed out on eating disorders. If you get any referrals for folks with high functioning anxiety, then um, I'd love to see them. So there's also inevitably, uh, Former clients will refer friends, um, colleagues will refer friends. So you're gonna get people who do not have your one specific defined presenting concern that you say you work with. Um, so if this question is coming from this concern that you're gonna get burned out or bored working with the same presenting concern all day long or the same niche, please don't worry. Um, even though all my marketing just screams eating disorders, I've never had more than 75% of my caseload have an eating disorder and usually it hovers around 60%. Um, now, the other question, potential question, if you have a business or service that serves a different population, then you need to market that completely differently. Um, it makes me a little concerned that maybe you might have multiple niches or something like that, which can really water down your efforts. So you could keep all your online marketing and branding consistent and maybe do word of mouth for this other niche or this other service you wanna offer um, if it's not congruent with your ideal clients and what they're looking for. So I hope that helps. If you need help building, we have everything you need over in the abundanceparty.com. If you have questions, please shoot me an email. I'd love to answer them right here on Ask Allison. That's ask at abundancepracticebuilding.com. Thank you.